Hey, gang, Ross here for Ross and Nez. We have a great guest today. Brian Alvey joins us. He's the founder of Clipisode. It's a new app uh, that helps you put together videos for uh, social media and perhaps something you could use uh, for getting clips for a podcast or even a live video show. We're going to find out all about it. Nez, I'm excited to talk to this guy. I, I love learning about new apps, particularly as they relate to video and podcasting. We're going we're gonna to see a, I mean, if we haven't already, the revolution has begun, folks. And if you're not jumping in on this, if you're not understanding that live video, Ross and I have been doing this forever. Uh, we have been advocating, evangelizing this forever. If you are not under 1920, I think we started. Well, we, it was actually 1820, but that's okay. I'll correct <laughs> I'm but, sorry. You know, uh, with the silent movie. <laughs> yes. Yes. With the silent movie. I wish you would kind of incorporate more of a silent movie right now. Anyway, uh, I'll try and do that. No, Thank but, you. Uh, live video, growing your business, growing your presence, growing your purpose and your vision. This is it folks. And we've got an amazing guest who's got a brand new app. I can't wait to hear from him. It's fantastic. So Brian, tell us, give people an overview uh, who haven't tried it. I tried it and played around with it a little bit. I think Nez took a look at it. Um, yeah. But for people who haven't uh, taken a look at Clipisode, tell us what it is and, and how you kind of go about using it. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks for having me on. This is very exciting. Um, so my background, like, like I, I was thinking about, like, I'll tell you about the product in a second. But just thinking about what I've done in my entire career and what you guys are talking about, like you are preaching to people who maybe haven't done a video show before. You're telling them, you need to start doing a video show. It's going to take your career to the next level, maybe two levels up, right? Um, and I have a product for kind of making those people bionic. And then I thought, um, that's just been my whole career, right? I, I have like a tagline for myself. I build software that makes creative people more powerful. And at, nice. at some point a couple of years ago, I just realized that sums up everything I've done. Doesn't matter if it was back in the days of print publishing in the early 90s. Doesn't matter if the web hit in 95 and I built the first like Business Week and TV Guide websites back in like 22 years ago, which is kind of ridiculous, right? 22 wow. old websites, right? Um, <laughs> Don't remind since me. Then, I know, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it wasn't the 1820s. It wasn't, you know, <laughs> and I'm, was I'm actually going to add a silent movie filter now to uh, Ooh, episode. So you can nice be all one. silent with little titles. <laughs> and uh, some kind of like uh, piano playing uh, in the background there. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, and, that's and, so and cool. People try Just to don't use Ross's face. Or, or uh, oh, yeah. No, see, I'm not even going to get into that part. So, <laughs> so, so the last 20 years, it's been like building publishing platforms. And so, uh, which has been, meant like giant CMSs, right? Um, so if you visit AOL.com, they're using software. Like the stories they put on AOL.com are from right. old software of mine that you type stories into and they appear on AOL.com or Engadget, or TMZ, or Ellen's uh, website, EllenTube. So all of those platforms actually run 100% on software of mine from a long time ago. And then there's like 150 other brands I've been very lucky to work with that run partially on old, other old software of mine. So I've always been about, you have a team of like three, four, or five creative people, like maybe the two of you, and you wanna compete with 10 people across the street, and I've been the difference. Like, how do I make you guys bionic? How do I give you Iron Man suits so you can walk across the street and kick their asses while they're suffering with some crappy CMS, some poor software product, doing things where they're having to like do workarounds to fight yeah. their own system to like yeah. find a way to do that or doing things that are like seven clicks. Like I make it one click. So that's just been me in a nutshell. Like how do I make your lives easier? How do I make you bionic at making content? And the newest version of that is video, making video shows with other people. And then we realized, like, we had this, uh, we had this idea, like, it's kind of like group stories, right? You pull right. out your phone to do an Instagram story, you pull out your phone to do a Snapchat story, Facebook story, record eight seconds of video, six times a day, at the end of the day, you have a minute worth of video. I can watch your day. You're never in the same place twice, maybe never wearing the same outfit, once you're at the gym, once you're in a car, once you're at lunch, and I watch <laughs> your day. Well, how do you do that with a group? And so we had this idea, we're gonna make group video shows, it's gonna be really cool, kind of like group talk shows. And as we did it, we realized like, we're not the first people to ever think of group videos. Like 30 companies have tried this. There've been 30 mm -hmm. apps that did it. Facebook tried doing this. They had an app called Riff around the time of the ice bucket challenge. Right. And it flopped because every single one of those 30 companies did the worst possible thing, which is if I want you two guys to be on my video show, 
and, I, and you're like really excited, you're like, yes, I'm gonna send you stuff. The example I always give is, um, who's a musician? Actually, I'm gonna ask you guys this. Which of you guys loves music more? Because I wanna ask you both, but I'm gonna ask one of you. Which of you guys is a bigger music fan? Well, Ross, Ross still listens to Backstreet Boys, so I would have to say that I would <laughs> probably, I'm more the music connoisseur here. Great. <laughs> So I'm going to go with Ross, yeah, actually. I, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm going with Ross. I love Brian. No. Brian is not falling for any of this. I love no, it. No, 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 I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I'm going with Ripper. Ross on this I love one. it. Brian, we need you. Because he knows home. that I've been listening to music since the 1820s. <laughs> Correct. So here's the thing. So the example that I use, I'm looking for, like, somebody who is somebody you listen to who's a musician who's still on Twitter who's, like, active and not dead. So I know Nez is going to come up with some weird jazz artist from the 50s who's not around anymore. So my example of is Justin Bieber a jazz artist? No, I'm kidding. Uh, so not jazz. I don't know. Maybe. I'll have to ask Selena. God, anyway. Your frame of reference is nice. So Ross, here we go. Ross, you're on Twitter and okay. you see uh, name name your who's your favorite backstreet boy? <laughs> Come on. Let's do it. I don't even know who's in the group. Be honest, Ross. No, no. Be like, honest. You have that this. poster in your room. Don't lie to him. Right, exactly. Okay. So um, let's say that one of them is named Arnie. I have no okay. idea either. So okay. for the purposes of this uh, example, Arnie, he's the newest Backstreet Boy. Um, he, uh, he has a question. He goes, hey, uh, I want you guys, I want my fans, right? My hardcore Backstreet Boy fans to tell us, tell us in video, what's your favorite song on our second album? So you tell me your favorite track on album two, and I will tell you a story behind the making of that song that I've never, ever, ever told in the history of like the last 30 years since we made that album, 20 years, whatever it's been. And so Ross is like, oh my God. I'm like, I'm the biggest Backstreet Boys fan. I'm in. I know tra tra track, six, track six. Like, that's my thing. That's my jam. I still listen to it every morning on loop. So he's like, great, I'm in. I'm going to totally send a video. I'm going to ask this question. I'm going to be part of a Backstreet Boys video show that like two days from now is going to go out on Twitter. And like, I'm going to pin that on my profile. Like I'm putting that on my, on my LinkedIn page, right? Yeah. Like that's going to be the best. And so then the next thing that Arnie from the Backstreet Boys says is, great, now go <laughs> download Jump Cam or Weebly or Riff or whatever. Right. And you're like, and, and Ross is like, oh my God, uh, dude, I would take a bullet for you, but my phone is sacred. I'm not downloading an app so I can send a video reply to my favorite Backstreet Boy. But what if <laughs> Arnie instead, this Backstreet Boy, famous Backstreet Boy, said, just <laughs> click the link below your right. phone's camera or your Android tablet's camera or whatever you're using, your Blackberry camera, will magically turn on and you will get to click a button and just reply and send me a video, oh, a 10 second great. answer in 10 seconds. Nothing to download, no like looking for where to the app, download to my phone, all this junk. And so he does it. He's like, oh, it's track six. That's my favorite. So two days from now, the Backstreet Boys put out another video on Twitter and it says, hey, we asked you guys to tell us your favorite track from album two. We've gone through track by track and we've taken each of your things and we've answered each of them and we've told a 10, 20, 30 second story about the making of that song who played on it, where the lyrics came from, something that we've never told anybody ever. Now, because it's such a fine work of art. It's such a fine, it's, yes, exactly. it's a masterpiece. We That's need exactly to document every musician. I don't know about you, but I'm going, I'm going right now to iTunes to get Arnie's uh, track. I know, right? Exactly. I don't know. It's so sad that we made up <laughs> a Backstreet Boy. Brian, let me ask you this. When, when you click on the link, which is what your app pretty much circumvents all the issues of yep. privatizing and, and downloading the app yourself and having to go through all the rigmarole, do other, like say other fans get that same link? And yeah, it it's on this, Twitter. So it becomes this sort of chain of videos, right? Am I incorrect? Right. Yeah, no, wow. no you're, you're totally right. So what you do is you start the show, right? Record your mm -hmm. eight second question, whatever it is. Um, you guys it's might know a thing. It's always eight seconds? No, it's no, no, no. That, that's, or... I, see, I say that so much and then people say, is it eight seconds? And I have to correct myself. So there's no, so no is it's, there a limit? It's or two no... to a minute or whatever. There's oh, not really cool. a limit. Okay, cool. So, okay. so it's, we used to have a, a one minute hard stop on replies. Because mm -hmm. the whole point of like, if you have 10 people in a video show and each of them gives you a minute reply, now you have a 10, 15 minute video That's show. Long. It's like too much. That's long. I'm, I want right. clip episodes to be three to five minutes, but there actually is no limit. I just think that a 30 minute show is like too much. So, uh, so we don't have a limit. And then I would get like a one minute, eight second reply on one mm -hmm. of the shows I was doing, testing with my Facebook friends over the last bunch of months. And I'm like, ah, oh, crap, I'm going to have to like exclude that, right? Because that's just going to make the mm -hmm. show too long. But then here's the, here's the funny thing. If you watch that one minute, eight second clip, that's your train wreck answer. That's the magic. That's the best part of your right. show. Right. So I would ask a question about something. And I had this one friend and she comes on and she's like, well, I never thought I would own a house in Texas that I've never been to that my ex-husband lives at with I his new girl. That. Just goes on and on and on. And you're like, 
I don't think I can include this. But then after you watch it, you're like, I can't not include this. This makes the show. This is the best the answer I've ever got. That flip from yeah, that Yeah, that it's question. a train wreck. So anyway, so there are no <laughs> limits on it. So back to, the, back to the app. So you ask a question, 10, 15 seconds. You know, 40 is a lot. Like nobody's going to sit mm-hmm. through your 40 second question. Do a six, eight, 10, 12 second question. You ask that thing, you get a link that people can reply to. That link though can go anywhere. So I can text that to you two guys. And when you reply, you don't have to actually register or anything because it knows it's Ross and it's Nez and it's already like pre-filled out. So you just give me a video and you're out. So you think of like um, Mark Cuban, he's an investor in this company. Like he's, it's a third company of mine he's invested in. If you're inviting Mark Cuban to a show, you just want him to give his 10 second answer because you want Mark Cuban's content. Mm-hmm. You don't want him to give a 10 second answer, then have to type in his name, then have to put in an email address, then have to go to his email to click the confirmation link to prove he's actually Mark Cuban. That's the stupidest right. thing in the world, right? Yeah, you don't yeah. want a barrier to entry. But that same link on Facebook, on Twitter, in an Instagram story, when you swipe up, you can actually join these shows inside an Instagram story without leaving the Instagram app. And then tomorrow, swipe up to watch a six minute video that we all made together inside Instagram stories. It's group stories inside of stories. It's pretty oh, sick. Oh, that's brilliant. Wow. So those links are very portable, but if you sign up on Twitter, yeah, you gotta put in an email address and confirm so we can block the nut jobs. Well, you know, so you know what I love about yeah. it is, is that it, it gives you a square video so you can put it right into Instagram. You don't have to do any editing. Uh, okay. If it, everything falls into line. Now, if something comes, somebody gives you an inappropriate response, you don't have to include that. No, or you get you all get these clips on your phone. A thousand you responses. So you, the you author, the if, I'm, if I'm Arnie, yeah. let me just, let me just clarify yeah. for Arnie. Brian. Yes. So yes. if I'm Arnie, which, you know, by the way, the, the likeness is. If you take off your glasses, you're Arnie. <laughs> yes. Ladies Arnie. and gentlemen, it's all been a sham. I'm Arnie. Nice. <laughs> yes. But, but here's the thing. So let me, let me, let me clarify for our listeners, if I may, Brian. Take I want us back to the nineties, if you yes. will. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to break out in a dance in a second. 1890s. Don't yes. let me do hammer time. I will. Nice. Uh, I'm wearing the pants right now as I speak. Anyway, so I, as the utilizer of the app, I yes. get complete control. It's not, but my, Correct. but my fan base or like my, let's say my, um, I was going to say constituents, but that's a terrible name. Yeah, don't do that. My, my, basically my audience, let's just say my audience for the sake of this show, they are inputting their, you know, their, mm-hmm. their likeness, they're, they're inputting their thoughts, their opinions. Uh, and then I get to control Correct. basically who gets included, but it doesn't require a lot of tech, right? Like I'm no, not- no, no, no. You just drag and drop these clips. You choose which ones to remove. You reply to, to in line in between them. You add clips from your phone, from Dropbox, from wherever. Like you just get a basically a free form set of clips. It's just an easy way to collect them. So if you're Disney, like a company like Disney, they want stuff that looks like it's UGC, that looks like it's just shot on people's phones. It's very casual, yes, very right. authentic. Oh, but they actually have a hundred percent curation creative control if you yeah. say something like slightly offensive you're yeah. out they can stick in uh, special guests like ringers for mm-hmm. their for their things and put together these great little things that look like they're totally casual but they're super curated super not scripted but they're definitely um they're definitely curated brian i love this idea because this is all about you know making your audience feel inclusive making them making an immersive experience uh, I can just, I can see it already. Like people say, hey, I got into Arnie's story. Did you get into Arnie's story? Telling right. their friends, sharing this. Okay. They so, become- so think about that. Think about me being a guest on your show, right? Thinking about, think about why you guys are doing a show. How many shows do you do a year? Oh, gosh. I can't even count. Can you, can you run? All right. Let's say normal probably people. Normal, normal, normal people. people. No, no, <laughs> normal a normal people, podcast. I don't know. But I, caveat. No, but a, it, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we, we both did like a hundred shows. Right, a year, right. So you right? guys are machines. So that's two a week, right? Let's say you're a normal podcaster doing a one hour show once a week. At the okay. end of the year, you've done 50 shows. The whole point of doing this podcast is to get new guests on, to socialize yourselves into some new network every single week, right? So yes. Brian Alby's, you know, whatever fan base size. And then next week, you know, somebody else, uh, some author, some this, some that. It's why, right. um, you know, talk shows, Jimmy Fallon does this. One night he has like Megadeth. Okay, we get that crowd for the, the music people, the metalheads. <laughs> but we also have an author of a book on, yes. you know, whatever, global warming. Boy, and Ross, this get- isn't his first rodeo. Can you tell? Yeah. 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 I love and it. Then, right. and, and, right. and you, you get- basically scripted our entire strategy. I love well, it. Well, well, no, but here's, here's the benefits of that. Now right? I'm and supposed then- to ask you, did you bring a clip with you? <laughs> ah, I did. I did. Yeah. Roll the clip. Yes. <laughs> tell us what let, this clip is let me, about. Let me set it up first. So exactly. how he, I didn't so have time to relate, research the 30 second right. clip episodes. This, yes. So, 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 so if you do that show, let's say you're that podcaster, so you have a choice, right? You want to promote your book. You want to promote your brand. You want to promote your consulting business. You can go do a weekly podcast. 
Um, right. Unless you really hit the top, you're not going to get the audience numbers, things like that. And it's going to be kind of a slog because you're going to do a one hour show. It's hard to pay attention. Like you guys do a 15 minute show. You guys are geniuses. Uh, one hour show is really tough, right? You got to fast forward through all the craft. And at the end of a year, you've socialized your brand, your book, okay. your consulting thing into 50 new networks. What if you could do three five minute video shows every single week at the end of a year you've had, or at the end of a month, you've had 60 new guests. Wow. You've already beaten that year, right? Yeah. You've now socialized your brand, your book, your startup, your app, your whatever, into 60 new networks, never the same guest twice. The content is always amazing. I can watch a five minute video show all the way through because every 30 seconds, there's a new face on the screen, a new voice, a new story. Right. I'm never not engaged, right? Yeah. So it's not two guys droning for an hour about that one guest thing and like beating the topic to death. Where'd you go to high school? What was your first restaurant job out of high school? Like, <laughs> who cares about the story of your life, right? They care about tight three, four, five minutes of content. Hey, Brian, it sounds like you've got a real background in understanding audience consumption and psychology. How did you, I, I, first of all, I'm, I'm on board. I think this is a brilliant mm -hmm. idea. And I want to hear where you're at with the, with the release and the launch. Mm -hmm. And I know, and, and I want to talk about what your vision is for the future. But how did you come up with this? Because it seems like your background really correlates to understanding the psychology of how to engage people, where's the attention going, how do they consume information? Yeah, so consuming information and that psychology and that attention thing, um, this is very sweet of you to kind of say this, but I, well, I publish it in my blood. I mean, it's, I'm, just, I'm just calling it like it is, it shows the way you no, can. I, I, I have publishing in my blood, so like what, it was, I was working in print magazines before the web existed, right? So yeah. I've never not thought of things as an editorial calendar, a team working on a deadline to get content out at a high quality level, and, and really like, how do I make those people into machines? And that's, it's just been that way. Like I was a consultant at Business Week and a bunch of magazine companies, a guitar player and all these things in New York City uh, in the early, early 90s. And so that I, I just think of everything in terms of publishing. So here's a funny thing. Good, good thing Des didn't do more research. He'd be really <laughs> nervous right now. That, that, <laughs> no, no, that's okay. No, it's, it's funny. There, there, there's an ex-Vine star. You know, all Vine stars are now ex-Vine stars. Yes. So this, guy, this guy's one of the best. He's now like lighting it up on Twitch, this guy, Chris Melberger. And he had like a billion Vine loops and 1.6 million followers. And he was like their liaison to the other creators. So he's like really, really good. Now he's like tearing it up on Twitch. He's really cool. So he and I were talking about the app. And, and when I explained the app, I go, you know, I could do like an interview show, like a journalist, like a blogger. That's right. how I think, right? I'm 40 something, right? Like 47. And uh, you go and I, why, why the hell does a guy ever say 40 something? I'm 47. <laughs> that's just, that's one of the weirdest things ever, right? It's All a right. euphemism Let's, for old. <laughs> exactly. You guys can cut that part out. So I'm talking, <laughs> talking to Chris. <laughs> who's who's clearly in his 20s or, yeah, or right. so and yeah. um and i'm like yeah so you can use this to like i can interview ross and we can go back and forth and i can ask him how he came up with the podcast how did he hook up with ness how yeah. do you do this and we'll do like a three to four or five minute thing mm -hmm. or elon musk how did you invent the tesla where was the idea where did the idea come from did you prototype the first one in your own house like you know all this stuff and he's like no you're an idiot it's not for interviewing <laughs> elon musk you'll get like hundreds of views it's for a rap battle or me and Nez doing a burping contest back and forth and back and forth trying to one up each other. It's just free form clips of two guys back and forth except only one needs the app or me and all my friends. What's the dirtiest joke you know that you could still tell in front of a kindergarten class? Wow. Boom. You throw that out there. Now here's That's the other thing. You guys are the live streaming guys, right? This is your yes. thing. You're the live streaming yes. gurus. This is not a live product. Right. So, but it goes hand in hand with your podcast you're doing, yes. with your live streams you're doing. So this can be the three or four or five minute commercial leading up to this week's show and after this week's show, talking to people about it. So take that, um, take that sort of like news roundtable thing again. The whole point where it's not live, if I ask you, what's a joke you could tell in front of a kindergarten class, it's really dirty, or what's your favorite banana joke, right? Or what's your favorite <laughs> whatever, or what's your favorite Backstreet Boys song on, on album two? You don't have the answer <laughs> off the top of your head. On yeah. a podcast, you're stumped. Like, I couldn't think of a Backstreet Boys right, guy's right. name. I, I did come up with Arnie. So, <laughs> so the way – He's everybody's our, favorite now. He really is. He is. He, well, he's, he's the youngest. Arnie's like, stock he, just skyrocketed. <laughs> exactly. Yes, it did. So, so if you're asked this question on a live podcast, on a live stream, you're going to give an answer that tomorrow you're going to regret. You're going to wake up and go, oh, my God. God, when Nez said that thing, I should have said – Oh, hell. I, I answered with a song from the wrong album. I look like a moron. The Backstreet Boys are actually watching this, and I look like a moron. My one shot at getting in front of them, and I blew it. What if instead you see the question, you go Google it, you get the right album, you ask a friend. Remember that Backstreet Boys concert we went to? Who is the opening act again? Great, because I want to mention that in my answer. When you go to reply, you click the button. It's just using the camera built into your phone. 
Yeah. There's nothing. You're not downloading anything, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. so it's, if you're on an Android phone, you're actually good at using your camera. If you're on an iPhone, BlackBerry, Windows, whatever. So you go and give a reply. Then you watch it and you go, I stuttered. The dog barked in the background. Uh, I, I, uh, I have a, Wait, let me say it better. So you end up doing two or three takes. So now imagine if every single person contributing to your three, four, five minute video show, which lives on every social platform ever, even ones that haven't been invented yet, you can just share that link. Every one of them has now given you content that's their second or third take after Googling it, talking to a friend or researching. You have super high quality content instead yeah. of people on a show kind of like stuttering and thinking like, ah, yes. and wasting time. That's, that's what we bring. That's, that's huge. That's you. And you eliminate the, the barrier to entry without the technical wherewithal, which is, right. this is, I mean, you know, that really fully embodies live streaming as well. I mean, right. especially mobile live streaming. I mean, live streaming has been around forever, mm -hmm. but mobile live streaming integrated with social media. Click and go. Click and go, right? And that's yeah. why a lot of these people in this type of content and video is thriving. It doesn't matter if it's live. What you've really tapped into, Brian, to me, is you've tapped in 21st century storytelling, which is to me, it's all about video. Yeah. And it's so easy now. The Snapchat, access to Instagram it. stories. And you make it a million times yeah. easier. And everybody's kind of discounting as of this recording, everybody's discounting Snapchat. But guys, <laughs> these are smart people. They're not going anywhere, not just right. yet. So <laughs> yeah, Instagram, they're very, they're very talented. dominating right now. And now Facebook is even integrating new, you know, uh, story features. And even I just heard recently, maybe breaking news on Ross and Nez, they're going to allow a desktop posting for stories, which is interesting. Uh, I don't know. We'll yeah. see how that works. It's in beta, I think. But uh, stories but, rule. There's stories nothing cooler cool. than stories. It's you the future. It's like it's micro content Video stories. now. Right? You, you have, have to have, have micro content. content. Yes, because that has to be part of your content. It allows you to get brand awareness every single day, every hour of every day. You can go to the front of the line. It and just makes sense. Like stuff. Right? It's cost they want effective. more. They you, want you know what? More. You know what I love about the stories is um, is this. When you make a clip episode video, you're not sitting down like we scheduled this call. Right? right? We all right. stopped everything we're doing. We had blocked out some time and we got on and talked to each other. That's great. That's one way to do it. Here's a great way to do it. Instead, I want to do this in between other stuff. I have other right. things to do. I'm busy. If you're Bruce Springsteen, <laughs> if you're a famous musician, if you're a Beyonce, if you're Barack Obama, you have a, your day is probably full, right? Yeah. You may have your day scheduled. Yeah. I, I have this uh, thing, this story I tell, um, uh, it's called 20,000 dinners with Rihanna. If you look at how old Rihanna is oh, nice. and how old she may live to be, yeah. if she had dinner with one new fan every night for the rest of her life, that's like 20,000 dinners. Yeah. Right? So she only has a certain amount of time for, and she's not going to have dinner with her fans. So really my shot at having dinner with Rihanna no, she's is not like zero. Definitely <laughs> right? not hey, 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 not only, <laughs> not only is Ross uh, in with the Backstreet Boys, but he's got Rihanna on screen. Oh no, exactly. So, no, he's already had dinner with Rihanna. It's really yes. sad. Okay. Fantastic. So, so, really so these, was. Didn't so these famous Taco people, Bell, Ross? No. Yes. Uh, so these <laughs> famous people that I want Taco to use. Bell meal she ever had. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. I, the I, conversation I could see that. was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that. It's, yeah. yeah, it's about that. I want to see That's, that selfie. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Nothing fancy. Yeah. Right. So you think of these famous people. I want famous people to use my app, right? Yes. You know what they don't have? They don't have time. So mm -hmm. how do you make a product where they can kind of use it in those stolen moments? when they're in line at a bank, when they're in the back of a limo, when they're about to go on stage, right? That's what Instagram stories and Snapchat stories are. I don't have to schedule time to do them. I just like pull out my phone. I'm like, oh, I'm walking from meeting to meeting. It's your right. in-between time when you make stories. Yep. That's the genius thing about this. So now I've made a way that you can make a video show with a bunch of other people in your in-between time. So I can throw out a question and I don't have to think about it again. So what I compare it to is words with friends. If, yeah. if we played words with friends against each other, yeah. if we had no lives, we could finish a game in an hour. Like we could just go back and forth and be done in an hour. But if we have lives and we're busy, it may take us nine days to finish a game. How do you make amazing video content in nine days in your background time, the stolen moments in between other important things when you're a busy, famous, gigantic rock star, musician, athlete, whatever. That's what this is. It's tapping into that ability to do stories in between other stuff. Even regular people don't have time anymore. I mean, <laughs> that's what they say. Between working all day, being on social media, right. you know, it's family, so friends, all the different things that you want to do, and 100%. We're, we're all uh, busier than ever. Um, the days of like you go home at five and you just unplug is, you know, those days are over, right? right. So, mm -hmm. um, totally. You know, you know what I, I I love about the app, and and this is what I said when I when I first found it, I and I. I called Nez and I said, you know, 
What I love is one of the things that makes our show unique is that we're not afraid to bust on each other and have fun and, you know, do it a little bit differently than your average business mm -hmm. podcast or whatever. We could just do a, a, a clip episode where yes. we're just going back and forth and we don't have to be on and it. And include our audience too, right, Brian? Right. We can right. include yes. our audience and yes. they can kind of, it's just this beautiful kind of episode. That but you're right. It can be three audience clips and eight clips of you guys back and forth. Yeah. And you drag them in the order that makes the most sense. And then we haven't even talked about the fact that it's all brandable. Like yeah. if you're a brand, right. if, you're a sh if you're promoting a TV show or you're a live streaming show or your business or whatever, you actually can do these like custom animated overlay graphics. That's our whole business. That's the whole side of thing. But like to promote a movie that's coming out and then all the stuff looks like we just made a commercial together. You know, it looks like a professional thing wow. for our event, for our awards show, for whatever. So yeah. Cool. Tell us, uh, tell us where, 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 where you're at with clip episodes, where people, our listeners, our audience can find it and sure. what your plan is as far as, you know, uh, 2018 and launching it and getting it going. Yeah, absolutely. So we're very new. We've been in the app stores about two months. It's in both the regular, you know, Apple app store and the Google play for Android. So it works on both of those. Only the host needs the app. Everybody else just clicks a link. All good. Um, but uh, at clip episode on Twitter and then clip we didn't get the dot com. There's an actor in LA who I keep trying to like stalk and run into who, who <laughs> got that domain. domain before us. Yeah, it's like, it's, so it's, oh my God. Well, here's the best part. So it's this guy, and he's not like a famous actor. He's, you know, he's doing his thing. He's like, yeah, he's a waiter. Out. Yeah, he's kind of, yeah, yeah. No, so we're watching Christmas movies. Our kids are flicking through like, uh, flipping through Netflix for Christmas movies, and they brought up a thing called like Santa Claus or something like that. Santa Claus, but it's for cats. It's like Kitty, Kitty Claus. I don't know what it's called. Anyway, some cat movie with Santa. The second guy they list is this guy, Evan, the guy who has my damn domain name. And I, was like, I actually screamed when the kids were watching. I'm like, we can't watch this. I can't support this guy. He won't give me the domain. So anyway, so it's clipisode.co. And uh, you can, and from there, there's download links. Yeah, yeah, I know. Give it up, Evan. Evan, Evan if you're exactly. listening, for you. I, it's time I to give it up, okay? Please. I'm sending these two guys to your door. We're going to leave and, uh, all yeah. the links in the show notes to clip cool. episodes so you guys don't have to, you know, memorize this. But, yeah, I mean, I, I am such a fan of this. I think this is yeah. going to be an awesome product. This is a fun talk. Everybody, everybody listening, if you at all have any, you know, cognizance of how you need to present yourself i think in 2018 3018 you know 2020 18 whatever this is what you need to be doing you need to understand and leverage the idea of telling your story and your purpose through video through storytelling in the 21st century context i think this product's killer well so i was going to say well said about all the storytelling part and then you said the product was killer and then it sounds like i'm just saying well said that the product is great <laughs> yes storytelling 2018 <laughs> personal brand yes. on steroids okay well, obviously steroids. we think it, it's great um our list our, our, let me different, edit that let me we have a different promo. podcast yeah. we have a different podcast for products we don't like so nice oh that's awesome <laughs> we obviously like the podcast right. brian alvey thanks so much for joining us check it out clipisode.co or download it from the App Store.